All right, welcome to the latest episode of Top Five. I'm Tim Gordon, joined by Charles Kirkland. And on Top Five, we pick one subject, their five best performances. I'm wearing a shirt that says American Gangster, but we're not doing Denzel Washington. We are doing Wesley Snipes this week. Hopefully, my colleague, co-host, Charles Kirkland has done his homework. He is ready to bring his top five Wesley Snipes performances. Charles, you know, I'm going to be benevolent this week, man. I'm going to let you go first. And remember, man, you don't have to rush because we're going to cover all the great performances, man. So we probably want to save the best stuff in the Wesley Snipes filmography for last. So having said that, Charles, you can lead off, man. Wow, I appreciate that. But uh, I, I got to ask, why would you wear the Denzel shirt if we're doing Wesley Snipes? That doesn't Wesley sense. Snipes is, is just an American gangster. You know, anybody who's made, you know, some of the work that Wesley Snipes has made, man. You know, I'm wearing this in tribute to a man who has played some of the best crime drama gangster role characters, which many of them we may talk about this evening. So uh, the other point of this is you did not exactly say why we're doing a top five on Wesley Snipes. Did Good you point. want to? Okay, watch this. Behind me, it says top five. Last week, we kicked off our top five series with Will Smith. This week, we're going Wesley Snipes. And to Charles's point, the reason why we're doing Wesley Snipes, much as we did Will Smith, is that each had a new project that was out, this, out that particular week. Of course, King Richard was last week, which is why we featured uh, Will Smith. This week, um, True True Story, which is on Netflix uh, currently, is on, and we featured Wesley Snipes. I have no idea who we're going to feature next week, but we're featuring somebody, all right? Or what? We could do something altogether different instead of a person. What would we do that would be different than a person? top five car chases top five you know anything like that well i mean you can do that man if they when we run out of people let's try to <laughs> <laughs> we got we have more than enough people that we can conquer so having said that thank you charles for bringing that up man because people need to know what top five is why we're doing it and i think you have helped uh you know representing the person at home going why are they doing top five what's it and why was these names I can... <laughs> All right. Okay. So, All so, right. so having said that, man, so let's get it started, man. Uh, what is the t- the first of your five Wesley Snipes performances? Uh, I'm going to go with his most recent, well, one of his most recent performances. And uh, he plays a, an, a, 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 not an aspiring actor because he's established. He's an established actor who gives credibility to this small independent film that is being tried that's trying to be made by Eddie Murphy's character in this movie Dolomite is my name he plays Durville who the like i said a very established thespian who it finds it, it kind of hard for him to be thrust into the middle of this this uh of movie that Dolomite is making, but I mean, it's, it, it's a, it, it was a performance where we hadn't seen Wesley in quite a while, and he just shows that he continues to have superior acting chops, and I, I really enjoyed it. it got him a, a nomination for a supporting actor in that film. Uh, you're talking about a Black Real Award nomination? Yes, yes. Well, what else would I be talking about, sir? I'm sorry. I apologize, man. Okay, I'm just, I'm just checking. That's pretty good, man. All right. So since that's how we started, man. Uh, so you were going with Wesley Snipes and Dolomite is my name. OK, that's correct. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to go to my first pick uh, is the film that tells the story of an undefeated world champion prize fighter played by Ving Rhames, who was convicted of rape and sent to prison where he must. Uh, confront and ultimately fight the reigning prison boxing champ played by Wesley Snipes. Uh, One man's fighting for his honor, another fighting for his future. Only one will emerge from the ring undisputed. 
Wesley Snipes in this film was absolutely, it was, I, I love the concept of this. Now, whoever thought about, you know, we're going to take the heavyweight champ, throw him in jail and make him fight the prison champ. That's a, it's actually a good concept as a movie. And the fact that they cast Ving Rhames as the heavyweight champ who had to fight the prison champ played by Snipes. I thought it was a really interesting piece. Now, Snipes played, underplays his role. He is just the man who goes about his business. Um, when, when, the, when the heavyweight champion comes into jail, the, the machine starts rolling and they keep trying to put these two dudes together. And ultimately when they do in the third act, it's a really, really powerful story. Uh, still, Charles, as you remember, uh, the results can never be revealed because what happens in jail stays in jail, especially <laughs> when there's a fight between the heavyweight champion of the world in the prison champion of the world, or the or the champion of that prison. So, uh, uh, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Wesley Snipes, I like Undisputed. It's a movie I actually haven't seen in a minute, and it, it stuck with me, which is why when we went in this inverse order, I was like, okay, this is a good performance from Wesley Snipes. So that's my first pick. I'm taking Undisputed. Uh, you know, I said hold my beer when you said uh, Dolomite is my name. I'll take the more serious Wesley Snipes. I, I, this almost feels like a versus that I should have matched you with uh, a comedic performance, with your comedic performance, but you go ahead, man. I, maybe in the next round, I'll get you. All right, well, far for me to stray from what I love, um, I picked another performance that was actually quite comedic in a very action role in, in, in a weird way, uh, where this time Wesley Snipes is playing the villain, uh, a very enigmatic villain, one could say, and uh, kind of launched the career of uh, a wonderful actress we know as and love as Sandra Bullock, and uh, he played the foil to Sylvester Stallone's character, and I'm talking about the wonderful performance that he turned in as Simon Phoenix. Uh, you, 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 you said we were going to play one time if we, if we named the role, what movie it was in. But, you know, yeah, Simon name, Phoenix. Name the character, you, you know, so you're doing Simon Phoenix. So you must be talking about Demolition Man. Demolition Man. What, matter of fact, one of those, uh, I think they sting did the song, the, well, the, uh, the police Demolition Man was one of the theme songs for the film back in 1993. Um, a, a very, out, I would say, outrageous performance by uh, Wesley Snipe as, as the villain who just has this weird comic side to him that just really uh, paralleled St Sylvester Stallone's stoic uh, performance very well. I, I really like that movie. It's, it's a fun movie to watch, too. All right. Well, you know, uh, I like my Wesley Snipes kind of serious over the rocks, you know, like you drinking, you drinking comedic Wesley Snipes uh, where he's chewing up screen. I'm going for this next performance uh, in this film of a financially irresponsible manager who manages a jazz group. But his sax player, Shadow Henderson, you like that, wants to replace him with a better businessman by the name of Bleak, the band's trumpeter, then tries to defend his close pal giant, leading to a power struggle between the two musicians in Mo Better Blues. Now, Mo Better Blues, to me, and I've said it every time I watch this movie, it feels like a, a wasted opportunity because it was the only film that, what, what, that Denzel Washington and Wesley Snipes appeared together. And I thought that that film had these guys at their height, because I always tell people, and I told Wesley when we interviewed him earlier this week, that people keep forgetting that in the early 1990s, there were three actors on that Mount Rushmore. It was Denzel Washington, Lawrence Fishburne, and Wesley Snipes. And you know, while you were watching movies like Deep Cover, uh, Wesley Snipes was doing stuff like Mo Better Blues and Jungle Fever. And of course, Denzel had Malcolm and Glory and some of these other movies. So they were three huge A-list box office guys during that time. And in Mo Better Blues, Spike Lee was actually able to get two of these dudes in the same movie, man. And it, it was real. And also you had a young Sam Jackson in this film as well. 
So yeah. it was really a good story. But I love Snipes' character in this film, man. Uh, Snipes, of course, plays a competitor to Bleak initially when they're all in the same band. Bleak, of course, suffers an injury. And the next thing you know, Shadow has taken over his quintet and his girl. And it's a, an amazing piece that, you know, you come back at the end when Denzel is trying to resurrect his career. And it is his friend, Shadow Henderson, played by Snipes, who gives him that opportunity in a very right. touching moment in the third act. Um, so I like this film. And again, that's, you know, sort of kind of my wheelhouse. I like my Wesley Snipes uh, roles that are a little more dramatic. And we have definitely some more of those coming up. So, Charles, it's, it's your turn. It's your, your third Wesley Snipes performance. What are you looking at? I, I think that last one was a very decent pick. Again, the, strangely enough, the only time that we've seen Snipes in, in uh, Washington in a movie together, uh, which is kind of wild to think about. But I'm staying in my lane, like, like I always do. I'm, I'm going to another movie. Matter of fact, this movie he did came out the year before the last one I mentioned, Demolition Man, where he is uh, playing a basketball hustler who joins forces with uh, another basketball hustler, a, a white one, in the, in, as a matter of fact, to double their chances of winning money on, on, in a basketball tournament. Uh, he plays opposite Woody Harrelson and uh, Rosie Perez, and uh, I can't think of the um, uh, Tyra Farrell as he's playing the Sidney Dean Hustler Supreme in the movie from 1992, White Men Can't Jump. Uh, again, another performance, a, a very comedic performance, but very athletic performance as well for Wesley Snipes, who who play who plays basketball and and and. I mean, this performance was just madcap. I just love the I love the film, even though I, I I really was one of the people who detested the ending of the movie. But um, it made sense and it was good fun at, at the time. And one of the more quotable films of, of the of, of the time where all I can remember is we going to Sizzler, we going to Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So that's your choice, your third choice. All yeah. right. All right. So my next choice uh, came out around that time period. I want to say it was 1994. And in this one, uh, Romelo Scuggs uh, and his brother Ray Nathan uh, grow up surrounded by crime. And as an adult, Romelo becomes a high ranking drug dealer in the film Sugar Hill. Now, Several years earlier, Wesley Snipes it was a it was a crime, uh, you know, a, a noted iconic crime character in a film that either Charles and I will talk about uh, later on. But Sugar Hill, I thought, was another side of this whole drug tale, where you had Snipes once again, almost, and, and, and I don't want to say he's typecast, but he plays these roles in a way that are so authentic and so transparent and so convincing for a guy who's just acting, but he's really good. And in this story, it's even better because it's kind of that same tale that we saw earlier in Superfly, where you have two guys, and in this case, they're brothers that are in the drug game. Eventually, the one who's in charge wants to get out the game and you know go legit and the other one is like why are we getting out the game man this is what we're doing uh steve harris who's now in bmf also has a role playing kind of um uh romello's bodyguard their competitor played by ernie hudson who many people remember from ghostbusters was not cuddly and ghost like i mean funny in this one <laughs> and uh abe go to a whole bunch of other people but Sugar Hill is a really good film, a cautionary tale. Teresa Randall's in this as well. And an amazing performance from Clarence Williams III. But, you know, Wesley Snipes is doing what Wesley Snipes does. Sugar Hill is still a classic film. And we had to add that as one of our top five Wesley Snipes performances. All right, Charles, we're getting down to your last two choices, man. What do you got for us, man? Um, for my number two pick, <laughs> I'm going to go with 
the power of an immortal, the soul of a human, the heart of a hero. With this performance, uh, Wesley Snipes set into play something that has changed, revolutionized the world as we live in today. Because if it were not for this performance, I dare say that we would not have an MCU that we that we look at nowadays that we marvel at because of, of how they put this thing together. And I'm talking about a, a man who uh, played a vampire, half man, half vampire, with a goal to rid the world of all vampires, a protector of men. He, 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 he and I'm of course talking about Blade when Wesley Snipes launched or the played the not the first superhero, but he did the superhero such a way that everyone said, hey, this is a, a genre that we can get behind and we can do things. And like I said, if it wasn't for this, we, where would we be? Where would we be now? Hey, man, look, I can't argue with you, man. All right, so my second to last choice, and this is tough, man, because Wesley Snipes has a bunch of different roles that I loved a lot. But, man, when they say always bet on black, man, you got to respect John Cutter who's a former policeman flying to L.A. to start his new job working for an anti-terrorist unit of a major airline. However, apprehended terrorist Charles Rain, played by Bruce Payne, is on the flight, too, and it, and it sets off a bunch of different things in Passenger 57. Uh, but that line I just told you, man, was so great at the time. Always bet on black. Always bet on black. What's it like? In another role that for most people would have been a throwaway role, he turned that thing into something special, man. That was a really, really strong performance. And when I say strong performance, it's the film. He's better than the film, right? So it's always fun to watch Wesley Snipes in his element, you know, doing action, having his one-liners, you know, being that, that super smooth, cool dude. I mean, I, you know, I love Snipes a lot, man. And, and I think this performance, man, which gets us to our final film. And I already know where Charles is going, man. So, you know, I just graciously let him have this one uh, so we can be like, go ahead, man. Just go ahead and do it, man. Well, and and before, I, before I give this performance, I just want to thank you for allowing me to go first because I know it, if it were the other way around, you would have this performance as your number one too. So I don't want anybody coming for you because you you don't have this as your number one performance because it's mine. It, and that's just the way we worked it out for this show. So I, like I said, I don't want anybody coming for Tim because he did not talk about Nino Brown in New Jack City. I mean, I, do I need to say any more than when I said the word Nino Brown, Everybody knows New Jack City. This is the role that defines Wesley even to this day. It's who he is. It's who he's known as. The leader of the Cash Money Brothers. Uh, the hardest man on the block. And look, if you step up in the Carter, you better know who you're dealing with. <laughs> we talk about Nino Brown. What else can I say? Hey, man, I mean, you know, that that's all you got. That's all you got on uh, on Nino Brown, man. I mean, you know, this is, a, this is an iconic performance, man. It's, it's so funny because it's 30 years now. New Jack City has come out. And, um, you know, when you heard me earlier talk about um, Sugar Hill and the final film that I'm going to talk about, they all kind of fit in this trilogy of Wesley Snipes as a gangster. And the final one I have is the story of a massive drug operation which changes the lives of three conflicted New York cops. Uh, Eddie Dugan, played by Richard Gere. Sal Procidia, played by Ethan Hawke. And Clarence Tango Butler, played by Don Cheadle. When Wesley Snipes comes back one more time to take on a crime role in the film Brooklyn's Finest, where he plays Cass. And it was so interesting because when you watch Brooklyn's Finest, you all, it almost felt like, you know, inadvertently Antoine Fuqua wasn't making a sequel to one of these films, but it felt like when you saw that energy of Wesley Snipes, you're like, uh-oh, that's that, that's that Nino energy. <laughs> you know, Nino 20 years later. But uh, yeah. Brooklyn's Finest, man, Wesley Snipes. And it's interesting that you saw, I picked two of the films. I didn't pick I mean, I would have put West, I mean, uh, New Jack City 
as my number one, but you took it and we've talked about not kind of using the same films. But the fact that I got a chance to really spotlight Sugar Hill and the spotlight Brooklyn's finest, um, that was that that was a big deal, man. And it's and it's part of his filmography um that that I love a lot. I mean, there were films, you know, other performances I considered like the water dance, which I thought he was absolutely great in. Um, Disappearing Acts, which is actually technically a television movie, which we're not supposed to be covering, but I thought that that was another one that merited some, some consideration. And another one, Charles, that many people forget about because he was on the other side of the law in this film was The King of New York, which yeah. is another iconic indie that had Snipes trying to bring down Lawrence Fishburne, the one film the two of them played in together. Um, it, 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 you know, he's had a very interesting filmography. And I will also add one more performance that I thought was really nice of him that was uncredited that he played in Waiting to Exhale. A lot of people yes. will forget that Wesley Snipes is the attorney that meets Angela Bassett after her divorce. They talk at the bar. They spend the night together fully clothed with him just holding her. And I think if they would have done a sequel to Waiting to Exhale, he and Angela Bass's character probably would have gotten together at some point because that was kind of how it was inferred. But Snipes is, uh, he's had a, he's got an amazing bunch of work and uh, I'm glad we were able to salute him. So any final thoughts on Wesley Snipes, man? Um, he's great in um, uh, True Story, which is on Netflix right now, which I would suggest people watch. And I wish there was a way we could feature kind of like Turner Classic Movies features a bunch of his films. I wish we could just feature a bunch of Wesley Snipes films, man, because, you know, his work is not good to me. I was going to say, I like the way uh, uh, we can look into each other's character by the films we picked as well, because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, so a lot of my films are comedies where you, you, you get down into that serious, meaty, dram dramatic stuff that he's done. But nonetheless... Nino Brown is number one. Always is, always will be. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, yes. <laughs> sit your ass, sit your fire <laughs> ass down for me, change. Love that movie, man. Love that movie. All right, Charles. So uh, that wraps up this top five. We'll be back next week with uh, whoever's hot next week. We'll be looking for a performance, man. So. Uh, we're getting into Oscar season, so there ought to be some wonderful choices that are on the table. Where top five is going to get interesting is when we get into what I call the dog day months, when it's January, February, and March. We're going to be scraping well, see, the barrel a little bit. <laughs> well, we'll see. The, the performers will, won't change because we'll, we may still have some of those actors, but we won't be looking at good films. That's all we're saying. Pretty much. But, yeah, man. He's Charles Kirkland. I'm Tim Gordon. That's top five for Wesley Snipes. As I said, True Story is on Netflix right now. Check it out. And I hope if you weren't familiar with all these films, it will inspire you to go check out Wesley Snipes' work. But until next time, as we tell you guys, always see something good at the movies, and we'll see you guys on the other side. You take care. <laughs>